I'm so excited about this corned beef sandwich that I can't wait to show you how to make it. It's a Reuben, but with an Irish twist, and just in time for St. Patrick's Day. What we're making here is a Thousand Island dressing using ingredients you already have in your refrigerator. Here's a cup of mayonnaise, some ketchup, some relish, lemon juice, salt, paprika, and a quarter cup of finely minced onion. This needs to be made well in advance. The day before is ideal. So mix it all up until everything is combined. You'll want to cover and refrigerate but no less than four hours, but overnight is much, much better. It's worth the wait, and whatever is left over works extremely well with burgers. And here we have a corned beef. This was braised in water with the seasoning packet that came with it. Nothing special about that. And let me explain something about the cut that I'm using. This is the point cut. I would have preferred to use the flat cut. And the main difference is that the point cut is fattier and you'll have to do a lot more trimming, but that's okay. Remember that with a roast beef, you always want to cut across the grain. So this is nice and tender, but it had to get solidified a little bit through refrigeration. And you can see that it slices up pretty nicely. And because it's cold, you can actually see the fat that you want to remove. And you see, if you see that piece right there, you want to just cut that out or pull it out. You really don't want a mouthful of fat when you're eating this sandwich or any sandwich for that matter. And you just look at each piece. And if you see a piece of fat like that one sitting on the, on the edge, just cut it with a knife and repeat that with every piece of meat and you'll be good to go. Then we have the sauerkraut. This is packaged sauerkraut that you buy in the refrigerator section. And it's been rinsed with warm water and then put onto a strainer to get all the excess liquid. I like to rinse it because I don't like it to be too briny. And one thing I do differently than everyone else is I like to put in a little bit of that Thousand Island dressing and mix it up. It's not a coleslaw, although you could, if you wanted to, substitute with coleslaw. So here's our cleaned up corned beef, which has been in the fridge, and then I just warmed it up again just to make it warm, because we're gonna start assembling our sandwich. And here, here we have the cheeses. I have some Irish cheddar, hence the reason why this is an Irish Reuben, and that's been cold aged in the refrigerator. And that was a baby Swiss. They call it a baby Swiss because it's small, imported. And I uh, hand sliced it so I could make my sandwiches. Now the best way to make one of these sandwiches is to take your rye bread, in this case marble rye, and take two slices out of the package and open it up like a butterfly, okay? And what you want to do is lightly butter each one of these slices. But remember, this is the outside of the sandwich not the inside. So what you do with it next is you flip it. You flip both pieces at the same time so that they're just basically mirrored. And now what looks like the inside becomes the outside. Now you want to repeat that with the Thousand Island dressing. And be generous here. You really want that flavor and that moisture to be there with the bread and the cheese. You'll see. And of course we're assembling a sandwich, and we want to put the cheese on the outside. We don't want it in the middle. So top each one of these slices with your cheese of choice. Here, I'm making it with the, with the cheddar. And this is because my wife doesn't like Swiss cheese. And that was the whole reason for using cheddar in the first place. I'll go on and let's, let's continue making our sandwich. Take those juicy pieces of corned beef and start laying them out. And these were cut to anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch thick. So you don't have to put many layers on a sandwich. But make sure everything is covered. When I make a sandwich, I don't like to leave anything. <laughs> no holes, no edges. I want everything to the edge and as evenly spaced on the sandwich as I can get it. Okay? Then we'll apply a layer of the sauerkraut that's been dressed and then just flip the whole thing over. So now you have a perfectly made sandwich that's ready to go on the grill. 
Now for the first two sandwiches that I'm making today, I'm using my panini press and it's been preheated and I'm just double checking my settings. And if you own a panini press, these things are great for making these types of sandwiches, paninis, grilled cheese, anything like that. And I like to lay them down on the diagonal because I like the way the lines go across the bread diagonally. And if you don't have one of these, I'll show you how to do it on a griddle or a frying pan. And I'll show you, it's a foolproof way of handling a big fat sandwich like this. And when you put the cover down, just make sure that you're not pressing down. Just make sure that because that top swivels, okay, that it comes not firmly and flat across the top. Don't push it, you don't need to. Give it a little tap and let it do its, its job. And there you go. Look at these beautiful sandwiches. See the the lines that's nice and crispy and buttery. It's a beautiful thing. But if you don't have one, one of these cast iron griddles is your next best bet. I've had this thing for as long as I can remember. It belonged to my grandparents. And that's been preheated to about medium heat. We don't want to burn it. We want to cook it at a decent rate so that the cheese melts and the rest of the ingredients warm up. And here's how you flip it. You're going to need two spatulas and you want to get get them in the right position to do this flip okay watch right there nothing spills nobody gets hurt and let that finish cooking and of course we couldn't complete this without slicing one of those sandwiches in half to show you what it looks like inside it's a delicious sandwich and your family is gonna love it trust me on that and there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you come back for more. Until then, bon appetit.